Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to write the best resume. So we talked about how to read the job description. How are you going to take that information, all your meaningful engagements, and then write a resume that, that makes an impact with the person reading it. Okay. So effective resumes tell stories. And we use the acronym CAR. So what does the CAR have to do with the resume? So CAR stands for challenge or context, A is action, R is results. So keep that in mind. Context or challenge, action and results. I asked a student, they were applying for a job and I said, well, tell me about an impactful story you have that you want to illustrate to your employer. And so this is a story the student told me. Due to the lack of local leadership training as a first ever student run leadership conference, I researched organizations on campus, publications on leadership, organized a working group, implemented their feedback, invited speakers, fundraised for expenses, created the agenda and activities, and held a full day 250 student meeting. With follow up, I learned that several students had implemented the training in their own organizations or created new ones. Now, when the student told me this story, I was blown away that that's great. However, you cannot write this on the resume. It's way too long. So how do you take this great story and storytell it in a more succinct way in what they are looking for? So I asked the student, well, what action verb do you want to highlight? There are tons of action verbs that this student did for this particular activity, but a student said, well, this job is looking for someone that can communicate and inspire and motivate others. So I want to talk about that. I want to highlight the verb motivate. So let's rewrite this car statement. Okay. So the context or challenge that this student was facing is to provide an unprecedented student run training and engaged youth in their own leadership. Okay, so that's the context. Again, that's the why, the golden circle that we talked about. Why did you do that? The action they took, spearheaded and implemented a full day leadership conference for 250 attendees. Whenever you can quantify something, you should quantify. It doesn't have to be a big number. It can be 12, it can be four, just so that employers know what was the scale of which that you worked with. And what was the result? Resulting in 12 student groups to be inspired to start their own programs. So this car statement tells you the exact same story as the previous statement, but highlights the verb motivate. So when you're telling your story, you have to think about what have you done that's unique or special for that organization or for that activity? What skill do you want to highlight? What action verb do you want to highlight? What are the actions you took to achieve the outcome? What was your impact? And check for the car linkage. Okay. So here are some examples. For our CVs, this is what we're used to. It's a list of everything that we've ever done. But now you want to make these short mini stories using these car statements. Now, for example, this student wrote this um, here because the company was asking for experience and high throughput. So she wrote, led the genomic screening of a novel 3KB candidate gene analysis with 10 DNA templates, 100 primer designs, processing 3,000 PCR reactions per day over nine months, resulting in the elucidation of the cause of the mutation and a publication. This whole one statement car, car statement is about a year's worth of work. Here's another one. Spearheaded interdepartmental collaboration with eight other student councils to host first ever undergrad mentorship program, resulting in 56 students finding professional mentors over three years. This is a three year project in one statement. Led fundraising activities with five other colleagues to increase donations by 22% from previous student council. So this tells a story as opposed to student council president overseeing events and fundraising activities. So some people ask me, well, aren't these a little bit long to go on your resume? For these car statements, you probably want 
uh, on an eight and a half by 11 page, they're gonna go across the page, maybe two lines, two and a half at most to tell your story. And what I've also seen with some students is that if it's your research project, you're gonna have many car statements that are gonna have the same result or they have the same context or the challenge. So what I've also seen is the students will write the context or the challenge, all the action steps that they took and then the results that came out of that. And you can do that as well. So sandwich many action statements in between the context and the result. So here's an example that I've just put on two pages. Here is your name, your contact info, the objective. So the objective is not required for all industries. So um, the finance industry, management consulting, they don't really require an objective, but other people like to see that. Okay, so the objective is um, very similar to the first statement of your cover letter. And that is what you can bring to the table. So an example of an objective statement could be offering five years of biochemical research and um, scientific communication excellence. Okay, let's say you were part of a communications team to the position of application scientist for company X, basically what you're gonna do to strengthen your R&D department in product A development. Okay, so then you're talking about what you're gonna do, why you wanna do there, and how you're gonna work there. So you wanna have that in your objective. So again, the golden circle. And then you have the experience, especially in, um, for industry, they're looking for experience. So for most of you, your researcher is gonna be at the top, PhD researcher, department, and the years that you were running, so 2014 to 2019. And then you're gonna have your car statements under that. And then under that, any other activity that highlights your uh, skills that's pertinent to the job. So if they're asking for teamwork, if they're asking for communications, anything that illustrates that is going to go there. Okay, so this person has president of a student council, a teaching assistant, and then under here is you have pertinent skills. So pertinent skills is gonna be whatever that job description is asking for. Let's say they're looking for uh, flow cytometry experience. This is where you're gonna put it in. High throughput genomic screen experience. This is where, and you just list the skills and separate them with commas. Okay. Publications and conferences, speaking engagement and awards. If you have many of these things, then it's okay to have a two page resume for an R&D scientist position or for a medical affairs position because they care about these. If you're applying for, let's say, a communication role, you probably want to keep your uh, one page resume. So you just want to keep a one page as opposed to two. Publications, if you want to shorten, how do you, pub, you know, shorten 10 publications? You can write selected publications, and then you can have, instead of writing all the authors and the full title, you can just list uh, your name, what number author you were, uh, the journal and the volume, the page number and the date. Okay, that way you can minimize on that. And then again, for the conferences, you can select, just write down for selected or invited conferences and awards. Okay, something that you found to be most meaningful to you. It's also helpful if you have awards is the context of that award. Let's say you won a CIHR grant, you might want to write down only 17% of graduate students receive that grant. Okay, so the context is, is important as well. So what I'd like to do in class at this point is after I give an introduction on how to write a resume and how to read the job description, is that students go away and they look up a job description of their choice or they can create their own job by finding an organization they want to work for. And then they write a one page resume okay, with the car statements that we talked about. And then students bring it back. And then we have what's called a peer review. So I give uh, feedback on one car statement and we post all the car statements that students want to work on around the room and peers give feedback. So that's something you may want to try as well. And that's something we'll be doing in the class if you're taking GPD.
So along with the resume, you have to have a cover letter. So on my next video, we're going to be talking about the secrets behind the cover letter.